Ariel Lowen, so an update on your athlete, Ariel Lowen. Uh, how has prep for this week gone? Are you like, have you got all your ducks in a row? Are you feeling good? Yeah, I feel good. I have to apologize. I wasn't honest with you on our quarterfinals prep. I actually went into quarterfinals with a bit of a knee thing. The knee thing is since gone. So I can be honest with you when I say my athlete, Ariel Lowen, feels great. Like a little too good going into semifinals, to be honest. So now it's just the mental side of it, staying composed, just letting the body do its thing as we head into competition. Nobody tells the truth on these anime, don't worry. I know. Um, <laughs> is it, uh, have you liked going the second week, like the extra prep time? Has it, like, have you tested all the workouts multiple times? Have you got too long? I haven't tested any workout and I don't plan to test any of them. I did intervals of them. So I've practiced toes to bar to double whatever the order is i've practiced like how it feels to go from toes to bar to front squats but i'd rather do the workout and embrace the pain when i need to there's no point like testing out i gave the example of like giving birth i don't want to practice giving birth and feel how it hurts i'd rather just three two one get it done with and just like listen to my body the whole time um, I think Elisa Fuliano did the same thing. She did imams of all the yeah. workouts, I think. Yeah. Worked yeah, out okay I, for I her. do like every one minute, every three minute, two minute, just vary. But I'd rather go first because like I see Laura Horvath stories and they're on the beach <laughs> drinking wine, eating bread. And I'm like, man, it must be nice. <laughs> yeah. She's relaxing though. You're sharpening the spear. Exactly. Um, so the workouts and like six tests is there one that you're particularly uh excited about like chomping at the bit to do are there any that you're maybe more apprehensive about event one kind of stinks because we have one event that day and then it sets your heat placement for the next day for the next two events so event one for me is kind of important to get in the top 10 just so i can be in the final heat i'm most probably looking forward to the snatch event and the handstand walk event yeah. You, you, did you do that snatch event before? I did. I did it in 2016 and I did not finish it. I got one snatch at 175. So I really, I have an awesome media guy coming with me. I want a good shot of me getting both of them. And then I'll have like a 2016 aerial because I have the video and then put it with the 2024 version. Excellent. So um, I'm, I'm here for media, you know, like I just want the good Instagram posts. Um, uh, the first workout you mentioned there with, with setting the heats, what impact does that have on you? Is it the fact that you want to be racing against the best to get the best out of yourself? Is that the logic there? Yeah. And I think, I mean, selfishly, everybody likes to watch the final heat. So it would be fun to be in the final heat all weekend. And it would be nice doing like the toast of our workout, all of Saturday's events to be with, I would assume the cream of the crop, which is the last heat. Adam Neifer, a quick uh, update on your Fort Vancouver crew. Um, so Adam McAdam, uh, he's heading to West. What, what's the, what's the uh, yardstick for success for this weekend for him? You know what, man? Um, yeah, Adam... He's been – Mac is his name, actually. Adam McAdam, we call him Mac. He's, uh, he made it to semifinals for the first time last year. And so we just want to go there and improve. You know, what that placing looks like, um, we'll see. I think he finished like 30, 33rd last year, somewhere okay. around there. Um, so, yeah, he's a, he's a lot fitter athlete. And, you know, last year both him and Trista were uh, – it was their first time there. So they learned a lot, and the goal is to do better this year. Um, with Trista then, obviously there's, uh, when someone does well in a teenage division and moves up, um, there's a certain level of expectation that comes with that, especially, especially on the female side. Um, there's also the pressure that comes with being someone who's well known and garners attention and has, you know, like sponsorships and stuff like that, that they uh, yeah. need to fulfill and stuff. Um, how, in your experience, how does she deal with that kind of pressure? Like, is she someone who, who thrives in that and isn't phased by any of it? Yeah. Yeah. Trista's an amazing athlete. Uh, she's just like so wise beyond her years in that. Yeah. She doesn't worry about that stuff. And it's, uh, it's not a front she's putting on. It's not like she's pretending. She's just like, honestly happy to be out there and, and grateful to be able to 
you know, do what she's up to. She's graduating from high school, you know, a couple weeks after we, she gets back. Um, so lots going on outside of competition, but, um, yeah, she's just, she's really good at focusing on what she can control and, and, you know, putting her best foot forward. So, um, you know, I don't think the pressure that, uh, that you described as a negative thing for Trista at all. Uh, she's excited to compete. Um, for her then what, what does success look like again? Is it just improvement or could she have her sights set a little bit higher than that? You know what? Yeah. I think that for her, the most productive mindset is to continue to focus on being a better version of Trista. Um, you know, she'd love to move up on the leaderboard from where she was at last year. Um, you know, last year she did get to compete at the games as a, as a team. Um, and so, you know, that's not an option this year. So hopefully she can, she can improve, move up the leaderboard. You know, I had a chance to talk with, uh, actually spent, last weekend with her, Justin and Mac out in Boise for kind of a training camp prep for this weekend. And, uh, you know, when I started working with Trista, you know, she was just a kid, you know, a few years back, our sole goal was to have fun competing. Right. And, and make this something where like she enjoys it. She enjoys the process and doesn't, doesn't put her, her uh, just doesn't define her self-worth or her identity in the results. And she's done a really good job with that. And so, yeah, we're just excited to get out there and see what she can do this year. Um, Justin, then he's obviously on, uh, the comeback trail. Um, he didn't have the season he wanted to do last year and hoping for better things this year. Have you noticed a shift in him at all this off season compared to other off seasons? Like, have you noticed that there is there any kind of heightened level of determination or like, have you seen more grit? Have you seen more like dedication than previous years? Or do you think it's just that things just didn't really click last year? Yeah, man, there's... There was some of that last year, but I'm not going to pretend that Justin wasn't, you know, motivated or driven or, um, you know, focused last year. But I will say that he's, uh, he's got a different level of hunger going, this, going in this year. You know, last year there was, you know, I, I think he described some of the external pressure that he was feeling, you know, after winning the CrossFit Games twice. And, um, you know, I don't know how that ultimately affected him or not, but this year I think he's just – he's just really uh, remembering how much he loves training and, and working out and, and just focus on that, that improvement on a daily basis too. And so, yeah, he, he looks different just in the sense that like he's, he's hungry, he's motivated and he's, he's really excited to um, yeah, get back on the competition floor and, uh, and get back where he belongs. Do you feel he has a different kind of target on his back than other people at semifinals? Like, do you think people look at him who maybe want to qualify for the games as someone that they can claw back and like try and push themselves beyond more so than they would other athletes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I mean, maybe some of that stuff is true, but like once three, two go and go happens, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Not, none of that yeah. stuff matters at all. It's like, up, oh, just here to, here to get work done. Um, the three of them then all healthy, no niggles, no like strained anything or anything that they need to manage. Yeah, no, they're all, um, I think appreciating a little bit of, uh, you know, a deload week going into competition, but, um, yeah, man, good to go. Um, with the testing then you obviously had, um, a nice opportunity to watch Europe and, uh, Asia tackle yeah. the workouts last week. Um, has that changed any of their approaches, any of the workouts watching other people do it? Have they, have they had enough time to test it? Do you feel Have they maybe had too much time to test it? Um, I mean, definitely more time than, than ideal. Uh, you know, it, it's like, I think it's the most fun as an athlete when they're like, here's the workout. And then, you know, you do it in an hour, three, two, one, go. Anytime you have that much preparation time, there's just more thought and, uh, sure. yeah, preparation that goes into the workouts. But, um, yeah, I think watching Europe, you know, there was definitely lots to learn there, um, for sure. Uh, I don't know that it changed, you know, the approach a whole lot. It more or less just, you know, confirmed what we figured was possible and uh you know there's definitely some some little takeaways that you know that we learned from watching those guys go and that we'll use in competition you know that now that we're week two so yeah 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 definitely was paying attention to those guys and um yeah it was helpful steve fawcett hwpo training we're heading for oceania um on north america west this weekend uh we start off jake douglas uh obviously didn't have the quarterfinals experience he maybe wanted to have uh, we've gotten through all of that ready for uh semi-finals 
Um, how is he feeling? Is everything like no injuries? Everything's kind of where it should be, you feel? Yeah, um, just first day with him today. Landed uh, here in Australia. So first time touching base in person since games and just getting uh, yeah, getting into check with how his, how his body's doing. But yeah, he's in good spirits. Body's, body's fine. We're, we're probably in the best condition in terms of like injuries and things that we're having to deal with um, since the games. So uh, that's a bonus and hopefully we can keep that through through the week as well. Um, but yeah, he's in good spirits. Obviously, he didn't have the result he wanted in quarters. He wanted to be, you know, obviously a bit higher up. But um, I think the positive of that is it's kind of just put things into perspective and just kind of wiped the slate clean in terms of the expectations that he's got. And then, you know, can just go in full charge with a little bit of maybe his own expectations just like dampened um, and can kind of go into it with nothing to lose. Uh, really, rather than feeling like he had everything to lose uh, previously. So, yeah, he's in a good place and his, the workouts obviously have been released and he's got a good, uh, yeah, he likes the look of a lot of them. So uh, that helps with your morale as well going into a competition. Uh, Georgia Pryor then, I guess people might not be as familiar with her. Um, what can we expect from her this weekend, do you think? What are her aspirations for it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's four, right, in Oceana, four spots as well in the in the females. So, um, given what we know in terms of like who's not competing there this year, I think there's a lot of Oceana girls that have um, that have got their eyes on that spot. And Georgia's Georgia's one of them. You know, she's she's capable. She's highly skilled athlete. She's got a good engine. Um, you know, can move decent weight around. There isn't too many bumps in the road in terms of like you know. Um, curveballs from the workouts um george is very strong at just grinding out workouts rather you know that you know the really fast high tempo power output ones and we and quite a lot of the workouts are just you know grinding out and staying consistent over you know a prolonged period of time except from uh, event six um so yeah looking things are looking well for her she works day to day with what well, she trains with jake works day to day with Jake as well. He he helps um tweak her her program around to suit her. Um yeah, I think she's in good good shape and excited to um see where she can stack up. And uh, North America then uh back to Carson, back to the roots. Uh I guess I should ask you about Fellner. He's H W P O now. Um he's obviously the reigning uh semi final champ. Uh, yeah. decent season last year like can't really have any complaints um is he of the kind of vintage where it's literally just get through it or do you think he's someone who you know maybe performs better when he's consistently winning or consistently performing at that like highest possible level rather than just getting across the hurdles i think we found out that just getting across the hurdles doesn't exist this weekend uh with yone um you know someone who's just smash the open and, and quarterfinals um just it's just not a it's not a thing at this point given um given the, the style of workouts given the how competitive each region is um so yeah i don't think he's going to be relying um on his vintage at this point he knows that he's going to have to bring his best game to get a spot just like everyone else uh sam quant then uh somebody uh scott Schweitzer pointed out on the debate show yesterday that every three years sam has a, a dip in performance and it has cost yeah. him his games taken in the past any concerns there is he feeling healthy and good yeah yeah no concerns like um we'd spoke a couple of times about sam he's had a great off season um showing like some results in in miami leading in um and just continued to make progress from that point really uh He's he's feeling confident. Just had a, a great uh, what has it been? Eight months since games, seven months. Uh, string of training without any hiccups. Nothing that's you know he's had to lay off this, that, or the other. He's just had a really consistent batch of training. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see how he does, and I'm hopeful that he doesn't uh, follow the three year uh, dip. Uh, Cole Grishaver then uh, probably the last like recognizable name um in north america west how are things there is he like ready to go do you think no niggles nothing like that yeah um 
Cole's uh, he's put in some solid times, not to kind of uh, give too many clues away or, or ruin it for for anyone, but his times that when he's tested the workouts are um, are interesting. So I'm excited to see uh, how he does. He's always done great as Cole, at, you know, at quarterfinals and semi-finals level. I think he thrives in the types of tests that you can get in an arena like that. Um, so I think, you know, he's always confident getting into this stage. And, you know, given the workouts that have been released, I think he's, he's looking forward to, uh, you know, given, uh, given the performances that he's put in in training, just replicating them in, in live competition. So I'm excited to see how he, how he does.